Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. I wanted to do another knife video. You, know, you can never have too many knife videos, right? Well, I was getting ready to give away a few of my uh, blades, so I was like, let's go through my entire stockpile of everything that I've reviewed on Prepared Mind 101. Now that I've had some of these blades for several months or longer, and I've got the chance to use some of them, Let's go back through them once again and give you my thoughts, see if they've changed any as far as, you know, would I recommend them uh, to you to purchase and what they're good for, what they're not good for. So I just stuffed them all in a dry bag and I'm just going to pull them out one at a time. Whatever I grab, I'll talk about it a little bit, go on to the next one. So we're going to start with the big blades first. So let's dig into this bag here. grab two of them. First we got the K-Bar USMC fighting knife. It's got the O-rings added to the handle for extra grip. What do I think about this knife? Uh, I still like it. It's still a good knife. It's not as good uh, as a Becker because it doesn't have the full tang. It's got the stick tang, but it, you know, I guess you could call it a full tang, but it, technically it's a stick tang. Lots and lots of people use this knife for bushcraft. It's a good medium-sized knife. You know, some, some would call this a large knife. I call this a medium-sized knife. Uh, runs you about 50 bucks. You know, it's, it's K-Bar heat-treated steel, so it's going to hold up for you. It's a good knife. Would I recommend it? Sure. Uh, it's not my top pick, but that is strictly a, you know, style issue. It will perform. So if you like more traditional you know, style knife, this is definitely worth getting. So, still like this one. What else we got? Okay, we've got the Condor Parang, which I stripped, if you hadn't seen it before. It usually comes with uh, black coating on the blade. This one, still like this one. It's a excellent chopper. It's got a lot of power to it, uh, but strictly a chopper. It's a chopper. Could be a zombie weapon if we want to play make-believe, but nice thick spine. You know, very high quality, you know, for what you get. I forget exactly what. I think with the sheath, you know, all together it's cost me maybe 55 bucks, I want to say, but uh, I guess, you know, you probably could baton with this. It wouldn't be optimal, though. So this is strictly a heavy chopper. Would I recommend it? As long as, you know, that's what you're buying it for, then yes. This is not an all-in-one tool. But out of all the Condors, this is one of my favorites. So there's that one. Grab both of these. Condor, or excuse me, not Condor. Cold Steel Tomahawks. We've got the, what is this, the Frontier Hawk and the Pipe Hawk. This one is much lighter, much faster. I've got a uh, knife edge on this blade. I actually cut a bottle with this if you go back to the original review. This one has got a good sharp uh, utilitarian blade. Got a, a nice uh, hammer pull on the back. This one is more useful as a tool in the woods than this one, just because of the hammer pull. Uh, would I recommend them? Uh, these are excellent, you know, low-cost tomahawks. Uh, the only thing is, when you get them, they look like shit. So you got to have a little bit of, you know, the the modification gene in you that you want to take stuff and make it your own. So you got to, you know, sand it down. You got to strip the crappy black finish off of it. You got to blue it. You got to do all sorts of Know, whatever you want to do to make it your own. There's tons of customized cold steel tomahawks online uh, that you can look up in Google Images, you know, to you know customize it to your, you know, whatever fits your style. Uh, for the price, I think they're excellent. So would I recommend them? Yes. Uh, but this is a light chopping thing. It's not. Uh, uh, you're not going to be splitting big logs with this like you would, you know, like uh, you know, with Will's Wetterlings or something like that. So. If, if it's a tomahawk you're looking for, then these are definitely worth, you know, the little bit of money that they want to charge for them. Uh, 
Ah, there we go again, my favorite. Oh, what do we got here? We got a snag, that's what we got. Okay, this is attached to the Bushcraft tool belt, so this is Becky, the BK9, in the Aswelke uh, Kydex sheath. Now, if you saw the Aswelke sheath, you notice I was kind of pulling on it. It was a little bit tight. I figured out the reason it was tight was because I had liners uh, between the uh, blade and the scale, so it made it a little bit, you know, fatter. So much easier in and out once I took those liners off because I did some modifications to this. Now, this is going to look better because I'm going to redo it, but let's see if you can see it. I, I did some work up here, added some uh, some blue etching, and you can kind of see I put respect with the exclamation point. Can you see it? That I'm going to make it darker. I, I still have enough stickers to redo it, so what I have to do is I have to put the stickers on here again, spray paint it twice, pull the stickers off, uh, reapply the etchant, strip the etchant, clean it up, blue it, and then it, it'll be a little bit darker. But you kind of see what I did here. There you go. That shows up a lot better than it does on some of them. That is the gun blue bleach etch method that I did on the flats of this knife. Would I recommend this knife? Hell effing yeah I would. This is is and will always be Prepared Mind 101's number one large knife pick. I guarantee you if you get this knife you're not going to be pissed off at me. You're going to be like damn thanks for throwing that knowledge at me Prepared Mind 101. This is an awesome knife. Some things people bitch about. I don't like the handles. They're too slippery. You know, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't have... Okay, the, the sheath's a lot better than it used to be. Beckers are made to be customized. Most people that are Becker heads and have our Becker head numbers, we all customize our knives. We all strip the coating off the blade. We all do different things to the handles. We all do different things to the blade. You know, it's it. Beckers are made to be customized so you can make it your own but it's got excellent ergos. What I love about this knife is it's a big knife. It can chop like no other, but it handles like a medium-sized knife. It's not blade heavy, you know, like the Essie Hoonglis or, you know, the Ontario Artac 2 or something like that. So, you can get by with just this knife. You can do smaller tasks with this knife if you had to. This is one of my top two picks for an outdoor knife. I'll always recommend this knife. It's good. It's one between this and Jessica. It's it's a it's a toss up. Uh, I like the name Jessica better. That usually you know gets the the favorite. But BK9 and for what they charge, my God, you get so much knife for the money. Every day, all day, I'll always recommend this knife. One of my top two picks. So there you go. And we got all the other stuff on here, but we're not going to go into that. Grab something else. Alright, we got the cold steel two-handed Latin machete with the you know ninja sheath. If you want to be like all cool and stuff, go fight the zombie apocalypse. So I put a wrap on this. I stripped it, I blued it, uh, sharpened it added some non-sticky hockey tape to the handle. What do I think about this after using it for a while? Would I recommend it for survival, for, you know, use in the woods? No, I would not. This, it's just, it, it doesn't feel natural doing just regular machete stuff with it because of that long handle. You know, it's, it's kind of a gimmicky thing, you know. You know, two-handed thing, blah, blah, blah. This is something, this is another one I'll call a zombie apocalypse blade. No, I don't think zombies are real, but, you know, if we want to, you know, play Walking Dead or something like that, this is, you know, one of those things that you would pick. It's not an optimal tool for the outdoors. So, 
if you're into that sort of thing, if you're buying it for fun or whatever, it's like, ooh, I got, kind of got a fun little weapon, that's fine. If you're buying it because you're building a kit for outdoors, pass. On the other hand, we have the Tramantina 18 inch in the marbles machete sheath that houses two Altoids tins. So this is another one that I've done heavy modifications on. I've cut off that upper swept tip and made it more of a you know clip point. Uh, I've taken the sharpened edge all the way up because the on the Tramantinas, they're not sharp all the way up here. I took the blocky uh, handle, uh, shaped it, made it more round, more ergonomic, and then I added some tape and put some, uh, I, I want to say this was like uh, some sort of over mold grip for uh, a tennis racket. But it's very, very comfortable. It's. Uh, it doesn't flex as much as the cold steels do, so it's very tough, it's very fast. This is an excellent machete. You know, South American machetes are always going to be the best because they just, they rule, you know, when it comes to making them. They do it all the time, they use them more than anybody, so if you're shopping for a machete, a South American made machete from, you know, Brazil or El Salvador is always going to be best. So, one sec. Sorry about that. I did make, make some adjustments. But Tramantina Machete, would I recommend it? Yes, I would. This is going to, whether you're in the woods or in the jungle, no matter what your location, this machete is going to serve you very well. Uh, especially where I, where I put my sheath. Losing my mind, my sheet just disappeared, so I'm just gonna set this on the table. What else we got in the big bag of blades? There's the sheet. God, it's falling out. I got so many. Condor Combat Machete. What do I think about this? This is an excellent uh, <laughs> combat machete. I mean, this is uh, something that would definitely be a weapon more than, uh, and I've said this in all the videos that I've shown this, this is not optimal for a survival tool in the woods because of the, of the uh, half sharpened upper edge. Now if you're looking to, you know, mess some people up, you know, combat wise or dare I say it, zombies, then this is an excellent weapon. It feels good in the hand. It's got an excellent sheath. If you're into that sort of thing, uh, I really like this one. What I don't like about it is this is one of the very few large knives I have that is not carbon steel. It's actually stainless steel. Not a big fan of stainless steel for large knives, but that's all it comes in, so that's what I got. So if we're doing survival, we're going to pass on this one. this one back in the sheath since I got it out. Okay, what do we got? Oh. Okay, this one is the Condor Speed Bowie. This is like a micro machete. It's the only way I can think of to describe this because it's basically a machete blade. It is not a knife blade. It's not a Bowie blade or Bowie if you're a you know, a pronunciation uh, Nazi. I do like the the angled handle. It does give it a nice, you know, forward swing motion. But as I said in the individual review on this, I'm not sure what the purpose of this thing is. It's too short to be useful as a machete. It's too thin to be useful as a knife. Because it is flat like this, it's not going to baton well. Yeah, you could, but there's there's no you know angle that's going to help split the wood. So what is the point of this? I honestly don't know. So would I recommend it uh, for survival use? No. Uh, if you're just going out in the woods for fun or whatever, you know, sure, you know, you can you could have some fun with this. But as part of a dedicated specific kit, 
that you're going to rely on, no, we're going to pass on this one. That's, an, that's pretty much a, you know, collecting blades sort of thing. We got this one. This is a little M Tech neck knife. It costs $12. Everyone scoffs at M Tech. You need to stop because they've got some really good stuff. They might have some junk in there too, but, you know, there are good ones in here. This is one of them. It's got an actual Kydex sheath. It's got actual G10 handles. It's got uh, 440C stainless steel. It's very sharp. Now it doesn't, you know, it's got a Tonto blade, so I mean that's not always the best if you're doing like little bushcrafty tasks. But for a little neck knife that's well made out of good materials and it's only 12 bucks, I really like this thing. So would I recommend it? Yes, I would. You know, even though it's a it's a it's a straight edge instead of you know a curved edge, just the quality of it, you know, the lightweight, compact, you know, nice and sharp. Yeah, I would recommend this. What else we got? I don't think I've ever uh, actually shown this in a video. This is a more, uh, I don't know the exact model. I'll call it the orange model. But this one is a, a stainless steel. I'm not a big Mora guy. I've tried them. I, I don't get it. I, so there's some people that love more knives and you know they've got some new ones that are like real like the robust it's real thick and stuff I'm sure they're great for little bushcrafty things bushcraft and survival are two different things okay I know people intermix them a lot but you don't have to do a bunch of bushcrafty stuff in survival if you're actually just trying to stay alive if you know bushcrafty stuff it definitely helps in survival but, you know, people need to make that distinction. You can be a good survival guy and not know a whole bunch of bushcraft. Uh, so this is a bushcrafty knife, but it might be good for you. I don't really care for it. It's just been in my bag, so would I recommend it? No, but it might work for you. Okay. Condor Dundee Bowie. Now this is one of the ones that is currently uh, going to be one of the giveaway prizes on the Prepared Mind 101 Facebook page. Ooh, what, what are you talking about, giveaway? Well, when I do random giveaways, I'm not doing it to mine for subscriptions like most people do. I'm very funny about the number of subscribers I have. I don't put out contests that people are just going to subscribe to win something because it's how I measure what kind of a job I'm doing. Uh, it, it, it's how I know whether people really give a shit about what I'm putting out. So I don't do stuff like that. When I do giveaways, it's more of a reward for you actually taking the time to watch my videos. But that's why I always put the giveaways on the Facebook page and not the YouTube page. But for once, I'm going ahead and tell you about it. You gotta actually like the, the Prepare Mind 101 Facebook page and find the thread and you know answer the question that's in there. And there's gonna be two knives in the giveaway and a couple other little pieces of gear, but this is one of them. So what do we think about this one? Well, it's definitely a big knife. It's definitely a thick knife. It can chop really well. Uh, I like the handle. Would I recommend this? No. No, that's kind of surprising. Especially given my previous individual reviews because I'm I'm rating them individually based on, you know, what they're good at. In this video, I'm saying, okay, what am I going to recommend to you if you're trying to put a kit together? This can definitely chop and it can do big tasks. It can it can baton really well, but for finesse type stuff, it's just it's too much. You know, like Will said, he was actually pretty, you know, generous in his <laughs> remarks about it. But it's definitely a beast of a knife. There's no no doubt in that. So I would not recommend this as part of a kit. But it is fun to play with, and that's why I'm giving it away. Let's see, we got the Cold Steel GI Tonto, which is one of my bigger videos, so I guess this is a popular knife. 
This one has been heavily modified, you know, with the gun blue bleach etch method. Uh, I rounded out this choil section a little. It's not meant to be a choil, but I kind of made it into one. This is a very, very tough knife. It's a very, very low cost knife. It's not a very bushcrafty knife because of the blade design. It's not meant to do those kind of tasks. It's meant to stab people and make them bleed a lot. Uh, but you can turn this, you can take the handles off and make it into a spear. Uh, you can baton with it. You can do a lot of work with this. You know, I, I tried it out. So would I recommend it? I would recommend it as uh, a backup knife. Uh, this is one of the low cost knives that will hold up to heavy use. And this is something maybe you'd throw in your car or something like that. I would not recommend this as a primary knife. But, you know, you, you're either going to like this knife or you're going to hate it. It just kind of depends on the person. But I do like the sheath, you know. So that's an either or as far as the recommendations go. I haven't had this one out in a while. This is the Cold Steel Cutlass Machete. This is one of the earlier reviews that I did. This is another one that I stripped and blued it because I don't like that black crap that they put all over it. Make make it a lot more, you know, cooler looking. Spent a lot of time sharpening it. This is one of those ones that came from Cold Steel, unfinished. Uh, I don't know why they do it, but some of the videos that they, or some of the blades that they put out, it's like they got half done making the knife and they're just like, oh, oh yeah, I'm tired. Let's just throw this shit in a bag and send it out in the mail. You know, let them finish it. It's, it's laziness. You know, sorry, Cold Steel. You got some stuff that I really, really like, but sending a knife out with giant burrs all over it, that's just lazy. You know, I, I got condors that cost just as much with polished handles and mirror polished freaking convex edges for the same price. You know, so you're, you're telling me they can do that kind of stuff and give you a leather sheath and you can't? You know, get your act together. You know, please. But once you once you get past all the extra work that you got to do, it's definitely a, a good heavy use blade. It's not going to bust on you. Would I recommend it for a survival machete? No. This is a weapon. This is a budget sword. It's not a machete. It might be made of machete type steel, but it just, it's too long. I mean, this is for lopping off heads and stuff like that. This is not an optimal, you know, bush machete. So for Prepared Mind 101 survival purposes, would I recommend you buy this? No getting a lot of the nose out of the way so far. I think I've what recommended two and a half so far as far as the knives go. Maybe three. Okay, what we got? Ah, uh, you know this one, don't you? Go ahead, say it with me. Jessica. My favorite knife in the world. What can I say about this knife that I haven't said a hundred times all, all over? You know, I love Jessica. This is my favorite freaking knife. Uh, this will always be my number one knife. So would I recommend it? Hell yes. All day, every day on Tuesday uh, for a one knife. It's just, it's every, good is bit, every bit as good as the BK9, but a more manageable, you know, knife size. So... I'm real big on the Beckers, and it's for a reason. It's because they're that good, especially at the price that you get them for. This is a Godspeed Tactical Kydex Dangler, by the way. Check that out. Does that look like a prefab piece to you? It's not. He makes this stuff by hand. So wait till you see the uh, uh, the, the Godspeed uh, Kydex sheath video I got coming up. I've got one of the two. Uh, she's but I'm waiting on the other one before I do the video so BK7 uh, highly recommended okay we've got the marbles 14 inch scout machete uh, this is a lightweight machete it's very simple uh, it's definitely a machete machete it's not anything weird 
So if you want a light machete, a short machete, a packable machete, this is a good machete. I like this one. So would I recommend it? Yeah, if that's what you're going for, a small machete. So I got this from machetespecialist.com and I put it in one of their sheaths. And this is actually the 18 inch sheath. But I like it because it just gives it, makes it sit a little bit lower. Okay, after I was just, you know, especially harsh to poor Lynn Thompson about his cutlass machete, I might as well throw him a bone. Cold Steel Bushman. Aside from the Beckers, this is one of the ones that I think is one of the best survival knives ever. And I know that's a bold statement, and I know it doesn't look pretty or whatever, but once you get it, once you actually get one, and you see the kind of abuse that this thing can take, and how much spring temper it has. You can almost bend this sucker over 45 degrees and it's going to spring back. It's got a very useful uh, edge as far as, you know, the, the, the upsweep of it. Very, you know, kind of reminds me of, you know, like a, uh, uh, what is it, a BK-5? I'm blanking here. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's lightweight. It's got the hollow handle. It's one piece. I uh, turn into a spear. I've shown that in the videos. This one has been stripped and blued, so I think make it look a little bit better. I really like the new sheaths that are coming out. I mean, these are the old sheaths. Now they got these Secure X, you know, like plastic ones. I'm actually thinking about getting a second one. You know, I like it that much. Uh, you know, you're looking at about 25 bucks from some online retailers. You know for this knife with the new sheath so would I recommend this one yes if you're not picky uh, you know about handles and stuff like that this can be a primary knife uh, you might want to do something with the handle uh, what I've got I've got a couple wraps of sticky hockey tape on this particular knife it gives it a good uh, grip so there's a there's a pattern going on here with these recommendations and I'll I'll clue you in here in a sec when I finish up One more for the sheath knives. I got one small one too. But this is the K Bar uh, Navy Mark I, which I've modified. I've taken off the top retention strap. I've added a Kydex uh, fire steel loop to make it a little bit more bushcrafty. This is my pick for a bushcraft knife. It's just the right size, it's just the right weight. It's full tang, but it is a stick tang, just like the K Bar USMC is. But, you know, people worry about that, you know, oh, well, that can blah, blah, blah. I don't see any, you know, big evidence of that out on YouTube land of people messing these things up. And if you are, you're obviously doing something with this knife that is above, you know, what it's designed to do. You know, don't go trying to pry a freaking rock out of a freaking mountain or something with this. This is for knife work. This is for bushcrafty stuff. This is for cutting. You know, maybe game cleaning, processing, whatever. But I love the handle. The handle on this is awesome. So I really, really like the Navy Mark I. But, but only with this sheath and this handle. Not a big fan of the one with the more K-Bar USMC type handle in the leather sheath. But And this one, of course, I stripped too. It comes black. So would I recommend this one? Yes, I would. This can be a primary knife if you're not a big knife guy. You know, like Will. Will doesn't like, you know, anything over, what do you say, five or six inches, five inches. But, you know, I like, you know, Jessica, the BK7 is seven inches. But for people that want something a little bit more manageable, and then maybe they've got a large, you know, an axe or a bigger chopper knife for that type of task, this is an excellent option, you know, under 50 bucks. What we got left? I gotta hide the sheath because, you know, I'm not ready to review the sheath yet, but there's Tracy, the Becker BK-14, which I've done a light blue on it just to make it look a little bit better. This is an excellent knife. Anything with Becker on it is gonna be excellent. It's full tang, uh, it's very comfortable. This is my go-to small fixed blade for, you know, the bush crafty type stuff. So this usually gets paired up with something else. Sometimes I have it mounted on Jessica the BK7 
now I have a separate sheath system for it, which you will see in a, in a video, maybe by this weekend, if the mail cooperates. Got a big pile of knives right here. This doesn't really count as a knife, but uh, it does have a blade on it. And that is the Cold Steel Gunstock War Club, which I did a video on. Now, I did my own modifications to this and made this uh, adjustable sling. So you can actually throw this over your shoulder if you want to. Now, people are like, you know, what the hell are you going to use a Gunstock War Club for anyway? Well, the Indians liked it. You know, if anyone's seen The Last of the Mohicans, uh, this is what, you know, dude messed the guy up with at the very end of the movie. You know, it's got the blade on here. But what no one ever talks about doing, obviously this is great for smashing zombie skulls if you've ever seen this on Zombie Go Boom. But what no one ever talks about this is using it as a large rabbit stick for knocking out game. Uh, this is a, a lot of stuff to carry. This is pretty big to carry, you know, so take it for what it's worth but I have shown that this thing throws very good and it will knock the shit out of whatever you throw it at so uh, if you're into you know, Indian stuff and you just want something to smash someone's skull with or whatever this is a fun toy uh, it's not real what I call a practical tool but if you're into it would I recommend it not for survival, but if you just like collecting, you know, weapons or something like that, it's definitely cool. What we got left? Looks like that's it for the uh, for the big blades. I'm gonna run through these small blades here real quick. CRKT Crawford Casper, uh, twenty dollar Uber knife. You know, solid lockup. Would I recommend it? Yes. Ontario Util Attack 2, would I recommend it? Yes. Ontario Rat 1, would I recommend it? Hell yes. I don't show this one often, but this is Cold Steel Tylite, and I've got this thing super retarded sharp. Uh, this is not a bushcrafty knife, this is a defensive knife. You know, you can use it two ways. You can put the pointy in into the meaty parts of the bad guy uh, you can cut with it or flip it over and it's a really mean impact device would I recommend this yes I really like it and it's you know low-cost kind of clone it's not an exact clone but this is the one that's not lubed up this is the MTech MT317 this is like a seven dollar knife. It doesn't mean it's junk. I really, really like this knife. I bought like six or seven of these since it's so cheap. Uh, it's aluminum handles, really solid lockup. It's 440. Doesn't say what. This is 440. USA design, but handcrafted in China. But you know, I can get these things real super sharp. So everything that this has. Uh, this is, you know, got the same thing, you know, you can use it as an impact device. I like these stiletto designs, they're actually really good utilitarian knives for opening packages or just cutting rope because, you know, it's like a four inch blade. So, yeah, I would recommend this one, definitely. Uh, you need to try some of these cheap knives sometimes. Uh, actually, I, was, I should say you should try some of these inexpensive knives sometimes. Because there's a lot of diamonds in the rough that you're missing out on if you don't try it. This is the one I just reviewed. This is the Kershaw Tension. Uh, would I recommend this? Eh. It's kind of boring to me. But there it is. I'm missing one somewhere. It must be in my... Oh, I know where it is. It's in my little work pouch that I carry my tools in. Uh, Spider Coat Tenacious is notably absent. Would I recommend it? Yes. You can get that thing nice and sharp. This is one I found in my box. I've kind of had my own little sheath made for it. This is a first generation of the, what is this, Cold Steel Kiridashi, you know, tack something or other. 
Uh, it's a little defensive knife, utilitarian knife, very pointy. Would I recommend it? You know, if you're into that sort of thing. It kind of looks weird hanging on your neck as a neck knife, but, you know, it's okay, I guess. But I got it, so I might as well show it to you. The, the, the sheath that comes in is pretty big and silly looking, so that's why I've got this real simple Kydex sheath, and then I've got uh, shock cord retention on it. So, wow, well, looks like that's it. Do I got any on me? Nope. Those are pretty much all the knives and, you know, edged weapons, tools that I've shown on Prepared Mind 101. So, to summarize what I would recommend and what I would not recommend, uh, I did a series of knife videos early on called Survival Blades. And one of the bigger videos is Survival Blades Part 4, Top Survival Knife Picks. Everything that's in that video is almost everything that I just said I, I would recommend. So nothing has changed. I still think all those knives that are recommended in that video are totally solid, totally worth owning. You can totally trust your life to them. They're excellent tools. So go buy them right now. I got little uh, five-year-old monkeys jumping on the window here. So I'm probably running a little bit long on the video. So that's it. I'm going to wrap it up quick. You know the spiel. Facebook, Instagram, you know, watch my videos, subscribe, share them, watch all the ads. Just just sit on my just sit on my channel and just watch the ads over and over again. Then maybe I can quit this, you know, damn job or I drive around all day and do this full time. So that's it. I'm Chris from Prepare Mind 101. Thanks a lot. Uh, there'll be some more videos coming here later and we'll we'll be back uh, real soon. Thanks guys.